Um, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for APSIA's virtual open house focused on development and conflict resolution. We are so happy to welcome you all. My name is Rihanna Suarez and I'm the International Missions and Operations Manager here, the Association of Professional Schools of International Affairs, otherwise known as APSIA. And just a little bit of background on APSIA before we get started. APSIA is a consortium of all of the leading graduate schools that specialize in international affairs and public policy around the world. With more than 60 members and affiliates around the world, students can complete a master's, mid-careers, and or PhD program at any of our APSIA schools worldwide. For a full list of our programs, of our member schools and affiliates, please feel free to head over to our website at www.apsia.org at the end of this presentation. These virtual open houses are meant to highlight a few of our APSIA member schools that offer programs specifically in the topic of development and conflict resolution. But this is but a fraction of them. So again, if you're interested in learning about all other programs, again, feel free to head over to our website. But today I am so pleased to welcome and launch the virtual open houses for this spring uh, with a few of my colleagues, specifically from American University School of International Service, Duke University Sanford School of, Pu of Public Policy, the IE University School of Politics, Economy, and Global Affairs, and last but not least, Syracuse University, the Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs. This time, I'm gonna welcome my colleagues to introduce themselves, starting off with our colleagues over at American University. Hi everyone, my name is Angel Martin. I'm the Graduate Admissions Specialist at American University School of International Service. Thanks for joining us today. Hi everyone, I am Dane Hamrick and I am the Director of Admissions for the Master of International Development Policy Program at Duke. Hi everyone, my name is Paula. I am Senior Manager of Global Recruitment at I University in Madrid, Spain. Margaret or Michael? Sure. I didn't know if Mark was going to jump in first. I'm Mike Williams. I'm director of the master's program in international relations at Syracuse University. And I'm Margaret Lane, and I'm the director of assistant director of executive education and oversee the um, executive master's in international relations for the Maxwell School. Thank you, everyone. Shortly, you will hear presentations from each of our colleagues on their programs and ultimately why you should consider attending an APSIA school specifically for development and conflict resolution. We will end the recording right before the Q&A portion and then allow you all to ask any and all graduate school questions to our colleagues. So thank you again for joining us and we will start the presentations over with our colleagues at AU. So thank you once again and uh, you will hear from me at the end of the presentation. Take it away, Joe. Thank you, Brianna. I'm going to share my screen now, my slides. Okay, can everyone see my screen good? All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. So again, um, we are American University School of International Service. We are located in Washington, uh, D.C. Um, okay. So since our founding in 1957, we have answered President Dwight D. Eisenhower's call to prepare students of international affairs to wage peace. We do so because we believe the world needs leaders who are ready to serve. In 1995, in response to President Eisenhower, our International Peace and Conflict Resolution, or IPCR, program was established. In response to growing international arms, environmental degradation, and global inequalities. Today, the program prepares graduates to serve the world's most vulnerable. These are a few of our programs. Um, we In green, we've kind of highlighted the ones that are more around today's topic. Um, so that's development management, international development, um, ethics, peace, and human rights, global environmental policy, international peace and conflict resolution, um, natural resources and sustainable development as well. And then we've highlighted in red 
ones that aren't so closely related, but um, they do have some relation. So that's global governance, politics and security, and intercultural and international communication. So we actually offer over 15 graduate programs. Um, so we have many for our graduates to choose from. With these programs, you're able to complete them in um, up to two years if you do them uh, full time, and then up to six years if you do these programs part time. Okay, so here is, um, I just wanted to show a few different stories of our students, where, how our students have done in the past, like what they were doing before they started their SIS degree, um, and then also what they did during their degree, and then after their degree as well. So the first person we have here is Emily. Um, she completed her international development program in 2015. Um, so Emily gained um, additional experience domestically working with refugees before her MA that helped her identify what particular expertise she wanted from her master's. So she had focuses in, on refugees, French, and the development and experience in Africa helped her to be a sought after candidate um, for roles in development organizations with projects supporting refugees in Africa. So you kind of see how she started. She had a psychology and sociology background. Um, and it also kind of shows you how you do not have to come in with an international relations background. Um, we have many different uh, applicants who come in with many different backgrounds. They come from health or different backgrounds as well, but then they're later discover um, you know, that they wanna be a part of international affairs. So you are able to kind of pivot into this degree and you can kind of see here like an example of, you know, what she went through and then also um, uh, what she was doing before and then during and then after. And then I'm gonna show you another example in my next slide. So Lauren here, um, she actually graduated from the Global Governance Politics and Security Program in 2016. So Lauren's Global Governance concentration within the GGPS program set her up to look at how international organizations work together or don't to manage to manage issues like climate change and migration and other kinds of issues that put a strain on people and communities. Her work with USAID included managing grants that supported community, strengthening efforts and historically marginalized communities in Southeast Asia. Now she is working to launch the Trevor Project's life-saving crisis services for LGBTQ youth in Mexico. So here we see Lauren's a little different. She started out with sociology, justice, and peace um, from the US. And then during her uh, program, she chose the GGPS um, Global Governance Politics and Security Program. And then after, you can kind of see here what she used her degree for. Now I'll go on to the next slide. Um, so we have Heather here who graduated from the International Peace and Conflict Resolution Program in 2013. So Heather created an expertise around conflict and the environment that married her engineering background with her MA in IPCR and set her up to be a uniquely qualified employee in the environmental and defense space. So you'll see she started before she was at SIS she got her BA in civil engineering and she had some teaching experience. Um, and then you can see that she um, was in the International Peace and Conflict Resolution Program. Um, and then after her program, you kind of see here what she used her program for. So Emily, Lauren, and Heather, they all have different backgrounds and different stories, right? But they all, all of them demonstrate the ways interdisciplinary um, shows up in SIS from undergraduate majors to using concentrations in the MA program to prepare you as standout candidates for employment, um, uh, illustrate the wide variety of contexts in which development and conflict resolution skills can apply. And they all deepen their academic experience via practical experiences and experience across different sectors. 
So here I have our curriculum breakdown. Um, all SIS, School of International Service, programs are about 36 to 42 credits. And as I said earlier, if you complete them full time, you can complete them in two years. So this is kind of our breakdown of, you know, what's what uh, what is. Uh, uh, a part of that program. So you have your core courses, which are nine to 15 credits. Then you have your economics courses, um, which are zero to six credits, your research methods, um, three to six credits, your concentration, which you can choose different concentrations. So say if you were interested in international peace and conflict resolution, you would kind of be able to, if you wanted to, borrow classes from another program. For instance, if you were enrolled in international peace and conflict resolution, but you um, wanted to, you were interested in taking some international development classes, you can kind of build that into your concentration and you'll be able to work with your advisor to really figure out what classes will best help you with the career that you were um, trying to get once you graduate? We also, um, there's also your electives, which are zero to six credits, and then your capstone project. So for most of our pro programs, you have a choice for your capstone. You're either able to choose a master's thesis, thesis I'm sorry, um, a research paper or a practicum. Um, so we kind of give you, and that's for most programs, so you'll kind of be able to decide which one you um, want to do. And I'll speak more about the practicum uh, in my uh, in the next couple of slides. Um, lastly, we have our foreign language and internship uh, slash professional experience. So that's another one of our requirement. For the majority of our programs, you'll have to meet our foreign language requirement before you graduate, as well as our internship slash professional experience requirement before you graduate as well. So here we have a few things that you'll be able to, other than just classes, right? What kind of skill building and things like that does SIS offer? Well, we offer our skills institutes, which are intensive workshops designed to introduce students to professional skills. Um, uh, students who, um, uh, I'm sorry, designed to introduce students to professional skills relevant to careers and in international affairs, taught by experienced practitioners from many fields. The courses allow participants to translate theory into practice and gain the competencies sought by today's employers. So students incur are encouraged to look beyond their own program for skills institutes that may be relevant to their interests and intended career paths. Students should also um, consult with their academic advisor, of course, when um, choosing these as well. Skills institutes take place over two to three full days and usually are offered on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. So they're available on the weekends, which is really good for students who are working or things like that um, during the week. So these are some over here. We have some examples of our different um, skills institutes. Our practicum, which I was telling you earlier, is one of our capstones. But you can also do a practicum. Um, you know, it's a, it's you can choose it to be a part of your capstone, or you could do the research paper or the master's thesis. The practicum is very popular because what it is is it's designed to give our second year students real world experience in project management and consulting. Students who choose this one semester pre-professional option collaborate in teams to support the work of actual clients, such as U.S. and international government agencies, um, nonprofit organizations, and businesses conducting policy and program analysis. Students working under a site supervisor and a faculty advisor draw on their substantial research, as well as qualitative and quantitative skills to prepare final oral and written analysts and recommendations. So the practicum is really popular because it's not just like writing a paper, but the students are actually getting real world experience with things that they may be doing once they graduate. These are, we also have some examples of our um, things that our career team does. So they do, um, you can meet with them for resume proofreading, salary negotiation tips. They just hosted their very first um, career fair, which you're probably thinking, why are they just now hosting their first career fair? But actually, AU usually hosts our career fairs, but this year, our career director actually decided to um, host an SIS um, career fair uh, just for our SIS students. So they also offer that as well. 
These are some of our sample employers um, that some of our students have gone to work with after they've graduated from our program. So you can kind of see here, U.S. Um, Department of Defense, U.S. Department of State, Deloitte, um, Global Youth Connect, just to name a few that are on here. You can kind of see the different ones that our um, students have gone on to um, work at after they've completed their program. And these are just some of our stats here. So we have about a thousand graduate students and you can see we have 93% foreign language experience, 15% um, first generation college students, 90% uh, fall 21 incoming cohort receiving scholarships, 20,000 worldwide alumni, 92% international experience, and also our classes, over 90% of our classes are offered after 5.30 p.m. So most of our students are able to either work or intern or volunteer during the day. And our students are able to work a full-time job and take our program while attending our program as well. Um, the incoming cohort with post-graduation work experience is about 75%. And then to close out um, uh, my presentation, I just wanted to put up these deadlines. So our master's program priority deadlines for fall is January 15th. We are still accepting fall applications until all of our seats have been filled. So we're continuing to take them in if you're still interested in applying for the fall term. Our spring admission priority deadline will be October 1st, and we will start um, opening our applications for spring in about June or July. So if you're interested in applying for spring, then you can visit our website in June or July, and we should have it available for you to apply for our spring admission. Our PhD program has a very hard deadline of December 15th, so you'll want to make sure that you have all of your materials in by that date to be considered, and then you can see down here our required um, materials. Thank you so much for having me, and um, that's all. I'll stop sharing now. Danny, you're muted. You can just go. <laughs> I was muted the whole time I was talking to myself. Um, so hello again, everyone. I am Danny Hamrick, and I am representing the Sanford School of Public Policy at Duke University. And the Sanford School is named after a former president of Duke University, who was also a senator and governor for the state of North Carolina, where Duke is housed. And he had a phrase that he would often use a for students call, and he would say, achieve outrageous ambition. And that's what we try to do at the Sanford School is to give students the tools that they can tackle problems that up until now were seemed insurmountable or impossible to solve. At the Sanford School, we have a variety of different programs. We have an early career master of public policy, which has a bunch of various concentrations, including international development and national security, which would relate to peace and conflict. We have a mid-career Master of International Development Policy, which I'm going to talk about mainly today. And then we have an executive level Master of National Security Policy as well. So a little bit about our Master of International Development Policy program. It's a mid-career program. So all of our students have five or more years of work experience. And they're a very diverse cohort. So they come from all over the world um, in a variety of different professional backgrounds. So for the fall 2023, we're anticipating a cohort of a roughly 30 students. And currently we have representation from 19 different countries who are gonna be joining us. And they come from a background of working in government tax offices to former doctors who are making career shifts into policy to those working in NGO networks um, across the ground, especially in fragile and conflict areas. Because we're mid-career, we're able to offer a very flexible curriculum. So you're able to capitalize on the best that Duke has to offer. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, and you're also able to pull from renowned faculty. We have both leading academic researchers who are 
sought after across the world for their expertise, as well as professors of the practice who have worked for many, many years in international organizations and are now devoting time to teach the next generation of practitioners. And they bring a wealth of knowledge and networks which they um, willingly share with their students. And finally, because we are a small program, we offer a high degree of personalized services. So we have a full-time director of writing and communications who can help you with your presentations and your papers. We have a dedicated staff member to global careers that you can meet with one-on-one -on -one to discuss your career or aspirations. And we have dedicated offices to help with, I with centers and topics around conflict and resolution, which I'll also share in just a minute. So going back to our flexible curriculum, we actually have two different programs. We have our traditional MIDP program, which is full time and completed over two years. And you can see here that there are a handful of required courses in economics, policy analysis, um, and then writing a master's project, which is the culminating um, step of your program. But beyond that, you have a lot of electives that you will work with the faculty advisor to select which courses best fit your career goals and your interests. We also have an accelerated program, which is last three terms. So you can complete it in um, 12 months or 18 months, depending on your preference. And it's slightly um, fewer courses. There's only 30 credits required. And you can see here that there's also a few, little bit more flexibility in the course structure. So only one required economics course, our empirical analysis course will become optional as well as our career practicums. And the accelerated is really geared for people who have significant work experience. They're looking to gain new skills, but are probably going back to their um, existing institution and also already have some graduate experience. Within our two year program and our one year program, we encourage students to focus on an area of study. These areas of studies help guide you in your course um, selection. And as you can see, we work in a variety of different arenas of international development from social policy and global health to environmental management and sustainability. One, two of the really popular areas of focus include our peace and conflict resolution track, which students have the opportunity to get an optional certificate through the Rotary Peace Center, which is housed both at Duke and UNC. And take, you students would take classes at both universities in that case to really take a deep dive into issues of conflict resolution and how to build institutions or democratic practices in very fragile post-conflict areas. Another really popular area of focus is our development management and governance, which is heavily emphasizes applied practical skills. So project management for development, monitoring and evaluation, cost benefit analyses, all of these tools that you can apply to a variety of regions and to a variety of different types of development projects. For our two-year program, between your first and second year, we do have a required internship and the career office that I mentioned earlier works closely with students to find placement. And students work pretty much wherever they're interested. So you can see we have students that work in international organizations like the UN or the Inter-American Development Bank, nonprofits, the private sector, think tanks, government. And some choose to stay here in Durham to work in academic research centers. They're really interested in creating a deep academically theoretically driven output before they complete their studies. And so they find this to be a great way to complete that goal. The culminating project we have, um, which you will complete your final semester here and you'll work with a faculty advisor and a committee of other faculty members known as the master's project is a deep policy analysis paper on a topic of your choosing. And going back to what I said about having very diverse cohorts, you can see here just some of the topics that are covered in any given master's project presentation day. So they really are quite wide and varied, everything from civil service reform in Mexico to dealing with insurgent attacks in northeastern Nigeria to improving aid effectiveness in Afghanistan and export diversification in Peru. So really students, when they're in our program, they pick a topic they're passionate about 
about a problem or a policy issue that they would really like to tackle in their careers. And then they take the best resources that we have to offer to really address these in a rigorous way. When I mentioned before the diversity in terms of nationalities represented in our cohorts, we will have 19 in our incoming cohort, roughly 30 nations total in our program come August. And our alumni network is from over a hundred different nations. At last check, it was 107 different countries where we had students come and join us at Duke to further their academic careers and professional preparation. So you really are going to join a global network of practitioners committed to policy and to making meaningful changes. And I think that this actually is just a small representation of what you would see in the APSIA community where you even get to go one step beyond the university level to have find colleagues and others who share your same passions. And so that's one of the reasons that we find joining and participating in APSIA so meaningful. To conclude very briefly, we do have two application cycles. We have a fall start with the priority deadline of January 5th, and we have rolling admissions after that as space allows with a finite final deadline of April 15th. It takes about six weeks to review, but you do not need to do a separate scholarship application and you can see below the material that we require. We also have a spring start. Applications for spring will open in early August and the deadline for our spring start is October 15th. So it's a very quick turnaround that you have to turn in your application, but then you could join in January and start your graduate journey with us soon. With that, I want to thank you. And I want to leave you with a quote from Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, who was also a Duke alum. And he returned in 2018 for commencement since it's graduation season, it's appropriate to share. And he said, don't just accept the world you inherit today and don't just accept the status quo. No big challenge has ever been solved and no lasting impact has ever been achieved unless people dare to try something different. And that's what we try to do at the Stanford School is to push and to encourage people to come up with new solutions and new ways of addressing really challenging problems that the world faces. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Um, I guess it's my turn now. So I'm going to share my screen with all of you. Um, as I mentioned, my name is, is Paula. I come from I University in Spain. And before I get started, you know, I do want to give you guys a brief introduction of our school. I will be speaking about three of our programs today, the Master in International Relations, the Master in International Development, as well as the Executive Master in International Development, which is for more mid-career um, candidates. But again, as I mentioned first, an overview of my university, we're a fairly young university. Um, this year will be your 50th anniversary, but we are a university that we've always focused on, you know, four main pillars, which is one, a global vision. Um, we are a very international school. 92% of our candidates come from abroad. Also very entrepreneurial. We did start as a business school. So entrepreneurship is something that is embedded across all the programs. Humanities, because we do believe that it's, you know, whether you're studying big data with us, architecture, business, or international affairs, it's important to keep humanities also at the center of our curriculum. Um, and as well as a drive for innovation. Um, you know, we are constantly looking for new ways to innovate. Uh, we've recently included VR as part of our summer classes, artificial intelligence. Uh, we have a virtual campus, but not just in that sense, you know, also looking into new ways of teaching and how the world is evolving and how we can bring that into all of the programs. Just to give you a few rankings from some of our schools, you know, um, especially as I mentioned, we started off as a business school. So our business programs are ranked very highly in, in some of the most prestigious rankings worldwide. In terms of accreditation, here are some of the associations that we are part of, evidently APSIA, uh, which is why we're here today. But again, across the different schools at IE, we were accredited in several organizations. As for the universities, so we have five different schools at IE. We started with IE Business School. We have our School of Economics, Politics, and Global Affairs. We have our School of Human Sciences and Technology, the Law School, the School of Architecture and Design, and then what we call IE Exponential Learning, which is more of the executive education and shorter courses within this school. As for what do students at IE look like? So we have over 160 different nationalities on campus. This is including our masters and our undergraduate students, 85% international students, again, as a whole, 
For masters, the number is a little bit higher. It's 92. 45 languages spoken on campus, and we have over 100 active clubs. You can find anything from the China Club to the Sailing Club to Yoga Club to the Finance Club. So if you have a particular interest, there probably is a club out there for you. Currently, this year, we surpassed 7,000 students in between all of our different degrees. And we are very happy to say that there is quite a good balance between male and females represented within the, the university. Because I don't have a lot of time, um, I do want to give you guys the QR, should you be interested in finding out a little bit more about the different alumni that we have here at I University. Now, let's go into the actual programs. So for the ones that I'll be speaking to, I'm going to kick it off with our Master in International Relations. This is a program um, that we have been running for about 20 years now. And what it does is that it combines a little bit of global affairs. We also have a part in regional studies in which students get to specialize in two areas of the world. We include a lot of international economics, security, and also conflict resolution. And then, as I mentioned, because of the entrepreneurial mindset, uh, there is a little bit part of, of management that goes into this program. At I University, we use the case method. So it's a very practical approach that we have to all of our courses. And in line with that, we include a field trip within the program. Um, this year, I mean, we've been doing it except for two years during COVID. Every other year, students have traveled to Brussels. We have recently also added Paris as part of the field trip. During this trip, students get to visit different European institutions as well as companies. Um, you know, uh, we've recently visited Politico, so even a little bit of communication also as well. And it's just giving them students a little bit of an overview of how politics is being handled here in Europe. In line with being a very practical program, uh, we include a capstone project. Students get to choose between doing a thesis or a capstone project. The capstone project is a group-based uh, research consulting project that you do with an external partner. Among those partners, we have UN agencies, international organizations, nonprofits, and also multinational corporations. Because it is an international relations program, we believe it's important for students, you know, not only to be learning here in Madrid, from their classmates, but also to have an experience of studying abroad. So the program does include an additional semester abroad at the University of your choice. I'll go a little bit over the options later. And then in terms of the study plan, students do get to specialize um, in one of three areas. So students can specialize in either geopolitics and diplomacy, international economics and business, or global governance. The reason for this is that we want to make sure that when you're coming into the program, you might have an idea of studying international relations, but it's while you're developing the program that you pick an area that you might be more passionate about. So it's in the third term that students choose their specialization track. In line with that, um, when you come into the program, you also get the service from our talent and careers department. They will be coming in from day one and helping your students in figuring out their next career move and where to place them after the program. You'll be getting workshops on how to write your CV, interview skills, but we also do a lot of events. We have two talent forums every year. And then we also have what we call the industry days. So for instance, there might be a day in which we will have several development banks coming in and speaking to our students and possibly recruiting from them. We have another day, which is for intergovernmental organizations. We have another day that is for multinational corporations, giving our students a chance to get a grasp of the different industries and where it is that they want to work after they do the program. As for the class profile, uh, this is specifically for the Master in International Relations. This past cohort, we had 47 students in class and 19 different nationalities. Here you can see how it was, it was spread out. In terms of the average age, this is a program that is for recent graduates and young professionals. So we're talking about 24 years of age, around two years of work experience. And for this, we had 21% male and 79% female. As for the program, this is a 10 month program starting in September. Graduation is in July, full time and women really full time. Students have class every day from Monday to Friday around nine to three. And then because the workload is quite elevated given that it is a one year program, you will have to invest at least two to three hours after that um, in studying or group work. There's a lot of group based project in it as well because of the case study, you'll have to prepare the case for the next day. So two to three hours of additional study. Nonetheless, don't worry, you'll still have plenty of time to enjoy the beautiful city of, of Madrid. Now, moving on to our Master in International Development. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a program that we offer in two formats. You can either take the full-time program or the part-time program, which is the Executive Master in International Development. 
The content is pretty much the same, but it does shift in terms of the study plan due to one being, again, for recent graduates and young professionals, and the second one being more targeted towards people mid-career. We require at least five years of work experience to be in the executive program. I'll talk about the format um, at the end. In terms of how the program is, now this is a program that is co-designed and co-taught with the United Nations System Staff College. That being said, it is a program that was designed around the 2030 agenda and the SDGs. We've also incorporated recently the Quintet of Change. So that would be, you know, five main aspects that are part of the Secretary General's agenda. Things such as digital transformation, project orientation, data analysis, project management, et cetera. The program itself also focuses heavily on sustainability and development from all different angles, not just in terms of field work in different countries, but also how to establish policies in a corporation, for instance. So students learn to design, implement, and execute the different aspects of sustainability and development. Much like the Master in International Relations, this one also includes an immersion week in Geneva, because this is where most of the United Nations institutions are located. This year, we also included uh, an additional day in Turin, where we visited the United Nations System Staff College headquarters. The program also includes capstone projects. A lot of you in agencies, being as it is co-designed, but not necessarily. It's not fully 100% UN targeted program. So if you want to do your capstone project with a company such as Google, for instance, this is also an option for you. And this one also offers facilitation tracks in development, innovation, and emerging technologies, climate change, management, as well as governance. And the same applies for the career services. Bear in mind that being um, co-designed with the UN, done in part a partnership program, students also have possibilities of working within different UN agencies after doing the program. As for the class profile, we had 55 students in class and 24 different nationalities, a similar ratio in terms of age and gender as the Master in International Relations. Now, as for the format, for the full-time program, that being the Master in International Development, it's 10 months starting in September and graduation is in July in Madrid. Also, class every day from nine to three and additional work time in the afternoons. For the Executive Master in International Development, this is a program that also runs from 10 months, September to July, but you only have to be in Madrid for two weeks, in, for excuse me, one week in September, and then you have to be in New York City for one week in April. Everything in between is done completely online. So it is very self-paced and allows for students to combine the program as well as um, their work life. Now, for the full-time programs, we also allow the possibility of combining it with a dual degree. So if you have over three years of work experience, you could always do either the Master in International Relations or the Master in International Development with an MBA. If you have under three years of work experience, you can do it with our Master in Management. Oh, and excuse me, these will run for 18 months. So you will start in with January intakes of the International MBA or the Master in Management, do that for six months, and then complete the entire second semester um, from September to July. Now, as for the exchanges, as I mentioned, students get to go to one of our partner schools. We have over 65 different schools. And here you can see some of the examples of universities that we have in North America, as well as Latin America, Europe, Asia Pacific, or the Middle East and Africa. So you really get to choose from a plethora of pieces in which you can then expand your educational studies. As for the admissions process, now, um, the process is done completely online, no matter where you're in the world. The interview, the entrance exam, even the English certificate can be done completely online. In terms of what we require, um, you have to first complete the online application in which we will require a series of documents, your transcript, CV, um, red letters of recommendation, cover letters. You also need to do an entrance exam. You can either take the GMAT or the GRE, or you can do your own internal exam, which is called the I Global Admissions Test. If you're only applying to IE, we would suggest this one because it is more targeted towards our program. Once all the documents are in, you would do an interview with a member of the admissions team. And then in around two weeks, you'll receive an answer from the admissions committee. We do not have any hard and fast deadlines. We work with a rolling admissions process, but we do recommend that students try to apply as soon as possible. A, because you will need to apply for a visa if you're coming from a non-EU country. And then B, because despite because we're rolling, sometimes the classes fill up very fast. We just opened a waiting list this year for the Master in International Development, and we're still about four months ahead before the start of the program. So we do recommend trying to apply 
as soon as possible. Um, in fact, the Master in International Development is already in his third year with a waiting list. The Master in International Relations, we're thinking about two classes this year and going over 70 students. But again, the sooner you apply, the better it will be. Finally, for financial aid and student services. Um, in terms of financial aid, the IU Foundation offers different types of scholarships to our students. These scholarships cover between 10 to 40% of the total tuition. You will have to do a separate application for financial aid, and you may do this once you've submitted your online application for the program. We have scholarships that are based on merit, on diversity, and on financial needs. You may always apply to up to three different scholarships that you would only be granted one. In terms of student services, again, as I mentioned, because most of our students come from abroad, we have an entire team dedicated solely to supporting students moving to Madrid. So everything from your visa process to finding an accommodation, getting your health care, and if you're coming in with family, ensuring that they also have a smooth transition, they're here to help you with everything that relates to moving to Madrid. And finally, uh, in terms of our global presence, being an international university means that we have offices worldwide. We're currently present in over 30 different, uh, 30 different countries. We host around 5,000 international networking events per year. And these are events that can go anything from our venture days to the global alumni weekends, um, to the global network, which is a little bit more of, you know, within your own country breakfast that they might do, student lunch, or master classes by professors that travel worldwide. Within our international offices, we typically also have um, a career advisor and an alumni person, a point person just dedicated to ensuring careers and alumni in the region as well are taken care of locally, not just solely from Madrid. And this is where you have our offices. So probably you can find an office uh, close to you. And if you don't, they'll probably be traveling somewhere closer to, to where you are. And that will be it for me. I believe I am going to hand it over now to Margaret from the Maxwell School. Here you guys have my email if anyone wants to reach out and I'll stick around for the Q&A after. So Margaret, over to you. Great, and I'll toss it over to Michael Williams and then I'll, I'll finish up if necessary. Thank you. I think you're muted, Michael. Oh, oh wait. Uh, one second. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Can you guys see the screen or no? Yes. Great. Awesome. Thank you. My uh, desktop is not working, so I'm on my iPad. So this is the first time. So wonderful. Uh, thanks all for coming out today. I'm Michael John Williams. I'm the director of the Graduate Program in International Relations at the Maxwell School. So I'm actually a faculty member. Um, I came to Maxwell from New York University. And prior to that, I was professor at the University of London. I've also worked in government. I've been a special advisor uh, to the German Defense Ministry, the Deputy Secretary, known as the Parliamentary State Secretary. I worked uh, on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee for Joe Biden uh, and at the U.S. State Department um, as a political military affairs officer, among other things. So I very much bridge the policy um, uh, scholarly divide, which is emblematic of the Maxwell School. Uh, so the Maxwell School uh, and Syracuse University uh, are... Uh, relatively large school, about 21,000 students. Um, 6,000 of those are graduate students represent all 50 states uh, and 125 countries, about a quarter of all students at the entire university coming from overseas. Um, one of the, I think, very interesting facts is almost 90% of our faculty are PhD holders. Um, and so at Maxwell, you'll find that all the faculty generally have PhDs um, and very few of them are um, just contract faculty. So I think that's really important. We have a number of eminent practitioners as well who teach in the program including Sean O'Keefe, who used to be director of NASA and secretary of the Navy, uh, and Lionel Johnson, who was assistant secretary at the U.S. Treasury, uh, to name but two. Um, and the Maxwell School, we're celebrating our 100th anniversary next year. We're the oldest school um, and the, therefore the first school of public policy in the United States. Uh, and for 26 years, Maxwell has been ranked number one in the United States for public affairs. Uh, that includes uh, both domestic public management and leadership, uh, number two for nonprofit leadership, um, number nine for international global and policy to name but a few. Um, so it's no accident that we are known to educate leaders now for about 100 years. I mean, as you've seen from our alumni base a few weeks ago, oh, well, a couple months ago now, we had a big opening uh, announcement of investment in Micron for microprocessors. And uh, the president, uh, the governor of the state of New York, and the mayor of Syracuse were all Maxwell alumni. 
So the MAIR, uh, it's a highly flexible program. It's 16 months, which is three semesters, including one summer. Um, it's 40 credits. Uh, the program is based in upstate New York, north of New York City, um, where generally students do uh, two of their semesters and usually a summer abroad and a final semester uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, or you could stay abroad or go abroad. Uh, and we do have a campus in Washington. We're co-located with the Center for Strategic International Studies, uh, which is the number one think tank uh, in the U.S. and actually in the world. Uh, it was ranked number one so many times they took it off the list and gave it a special category <laughs> in the think tank rankings. Um, so we're co-located there and we run all of our programs with CSIS uh, in D.C. So the core coursework, um, there's a relatively minimal number of uh, courses that are required of all students who come in. You can waive out a couple of these courses if you've majored uh, at the undergraduate level in international affairs. So you'll see it's pretty basic. It's an intro international affairs course. Uh, we require you to be uh, proficient in statistics and economic analysis, research methods, uh, management of international programs, uh, and international negotiation and crisis response, which we run through our capstone simulation. Um, I think also one of the distinctive features of our degree is the management uh, component, which uh, our IR program is in the Department of Public Administration and International Affairs. Uh, so in addition to teaching all about international development, uh, which you're most interested in, international affairs broadly, we do also offer training in management, um, which is really important, especially as you advance through your career uh, and are required to lead teams and manage larger organizations. So once you do those initial uh, courses and you can do these, you can mix and match when you take them, uh, you then take, pick a career track. The career tracks are sort of informative. Um, we provide you with a list of courses. And if you find courses that you think should be on one of those career tracks, but it's not listed there, you talk with me as a director of studies uh, and we most more than likely will approve it uh, for your concentration. So um, it's a very flexible degree. Our Core areas, as you can see here, and of most interest to you is probably international development. We also do international political economy, international service, conflict resolution, uh, data analysis, uh, and security studies. And then we have a number of regional concentrations. I generally encourage all students to focus on a thematic and then a regional area if they can. Um, but you only do a career track in one of those. Um, then also you have 12 credits where you can do elective coursework. So those are uh, for your choice across all of the Maxwell um, curriculum, as well as uh, the broader offerings at Syracuse University. And if you look at that photo, the building in the center to the left of the one with the big tower, which is the music school, uh, is the Maxwell School, which is two buildings there. Um, so some of the courses at International Development just gives you an idea of what we have on offer. Uh, it's a pretty broad offering histor historically, so this is really just a small sampling, uh, but it ranges from economics of development, international development policy and administration, uh, to more sort of geopolitical issues or just politics of the developing world or global sustainability and public policy. Um, we do have uh, a few, well, we have several specialized centers. Uh, we have an entire center dedicated to uh, the environment and sustainability at the Maxwell School. We also have a center dedicated to uh, artificial intelligence, um, which is a little off the development track, but uh, is related. We have a center dedicated to conflict resolution uh, and collaboration, as well as one dedicated to international affairs broadly. So anything you really wanna do, you'll find um, at the school. For conflict resolution, Again, a lot of these are based out of our center. Uh, oh, it's actually known as the Program for the Advancement of Collaboration and Conflict Resolution. Um, and so you have, again, fundamentals of conflict studies, crisis management, conflict and migration, uh, mediation theory and practice. Uh, so those are some of just some of the offerings. The courses change, obviously, every semester, depending on the faculty that are on campus and some are abroad. Um, but there's a strong offering across the board continually. Um, so a couple of the things uh, that relate to the program. Uh, global internship. So everyone does an internship. It can be in the United States. It can be abroad. Um, it can be taken for credit or it cannot be taken for credit. So we do not require you to do an internship and pay to do the internship. You can do an internship um, with no credit um, bearing. You just have, you do have to complete it uh, and have an evaluation by your supervisor. Um, if you do want to take it for credit, uh, for any number of reasons that is available, but you uh, don't pay to do the internship. Uh, second, international relations capstone seminar. So that's focused on crisis uh, response and negotiation. It takes place at the end of the second semester. So about a third, uh, two thirds of the way through your degree. Um, it's just one credit. Uh, we run a series of prep seminars in advance of that in terms of negotiation, people skills, um, and conflict resolution. And then we game it out over uh, a two day, a Friday, Saturday event. 
um, which is nicely catered and is a great way to uh, engage with your colleagues and also some uh, wider uh, parties at the school that we involve in that. Um, and so essentially, just so you know, 34 of those credits have to be Maxwell coursework. So you can transfer in six, which is two courses uh, in the U.S. system. And you do have to maintain a 3.0 average to complete the degree successfully. Um, you can also pursue a certificate of advanced study that doesn't cost anything else. You can do it concurrent to what you're doing. And it basically depends on what courses you take and how they match up to a certificate. So, for example, you can do a concentration in, co uh, in conflict resolution, but you can also do a certificate of advanced study alongside that, which is actually a separate degree in the U.S. system. Um, it's a advanced study certificate in conflict and collaboration. You could also, if you wanted to uh, do your career track in um, conflict uh, and uh, resolution, you could do your certificate advanced study in a regional area. So for example, Middle Eastern Affairs, South Asian Studies, uh, European Studies, um, they're all offer, every region of the world is covered. I um, mean, you could also then, for example, complement that with study abroad uh, during the summer or your final semester. So if you were interested in uh, specializing in Latin America, you could go uh, to Chile where we have um, a campus uh, and offer coursework and experience work. Uh, you could go to Strasbourg or Brussels and do work in Europe if you're interested. Um, you could go to Korea, uh, South Korea, where we also have a collaborative endeavor. So there's a number of options for you depending on your interest. Um, our alumni, uh, we have a, the Syracuse University has over a quarter million alumni. Uh, Maxwell, the Maxwell School has a massive alumni base, both in the U.S. and abroad. Uh, these are just a few of the employers uh, that, that have hired our cohort uh, in the last 12 months. Um, so that ranges from non-governmental organizations such as Amnesty and the Carnegie Endowment. Um, on through uh, the U.S. Department of State and USAID um, as branches of the government. Also, uh, the United Nations Organization has employed uh, Maxwell grads from the class of 2022. And you can see the breakdown here on the right, uh, which uh, kind of divvies up between not-for-profits of uh, sector, private uh, sector, federal government employment, NGO, and then international government. And then a small percentage of those IR students go on to do law or uh, work at the state and local level. But as you can see, it's largely international um, in either public, private, or not-for-profit sectors. So I'm gonna stop right there. Uh, that's a photo of the mall on campus and the Maxwell's in the back right, and that's the Hendricks Chapel. Beautiful time of year in the autumn, upstate New York. And Margaret and I are happy to take your questions. Thank you very much. All right, well, thank you for that. And I am gonna end the recording right there.